seek for clarification from the witness. So I will allow them to do that. When they're done, then you can usher in your second witness. Much obliged, so, Mr. Speaker. Now, Honorable Senators, you have two minutes to do that. And we are going to do that. I'm going to allocate 20 minutes for that exercise. Senator John Newton. Not present. Can you talk? Senator Sochi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have two clarification. Uh, the first clarification to the council for the Deputy President and is on the matter of uh, the first charge on the issue of shareholding. Can uh, the council, based on Rule 10, the Rule 30, sorry, of the standing orders, uh, explain the specific relevance of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition Agreement as a piece of evidence? Um, my second question is the Council of uh, National Assembly on the ground number eight, where it is alleged that uh, the Deputy President violated Section 132 of the Penal Court. So maybe we can be told a lot more about um, whether there was any report made to the relevant authorities as far as this charge is concerned. Senator Newton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to seek some clarifications from uh, the Honorable Mutuse. Uh, very fast, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, what led him uh, to, if he did, to think of auditing the wealth of the deputy president, was he auditing institutions? And if he was auditing the presidency, would he kindly tell us also about the wealth of the president? Number two, Mr. Speaker, who did this particular motion for Honorable Mutuse? And why I ask that, Mr. Speaker, is because uh, every time he's asked a question, he says, I think so, I believe so. Uh, he does not give convincing reasons, in my view, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, there is, uh, he has listed several companies. And these companies, uh, he, upon cross-examination, uh, he has uh, said repeatedly for each of them that he has no problem with the companies. Apart from saying that he thought, again, he thought, that uh, uh, they were, there was an intention to use them for money laundering and some other corrupt activities, Mr. Speaker. So exactly what, is it a crime to have in his understanding to own companies for the deputy president or any other Kenyan, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, when you look at uh, the affidavit made by one Jomo, Mr. Njomo, about acquisition of Olive Gardens uh, Hotel, with a promise, it is alleged, that the Deputy President would uh, buy the same later. Senator Ojenda. Honorable Senators, condense your thoughts. You only have two minutes within which to seek the clarifications. And uh, both teams, you. kindly note down the questions. So that once the senators uh, are done raising, we'll come to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to ask uh, the witness, Mutuse, 
uh, you have been taken to great lengths in on the ownership or the shareholding of the 22 companies that you have associated uh, uh, the deputy president with. I want you to just clarify why you included the 22 companies in your impeachment. You set out allegations on several companies. Clarify one. You refer to Olive Gardens Hotel. You refer to the, again, the Fingo Beach Resort in Kilifi County. You set out the CR12 of both. Now, I want you to just tell us or clarify the significance of the inclusion of these two companies. Just clarify that. On the ownership of Queensgate service departments, you also seem to raise a number of issues. I want you to also clarify uh, the ownership of Queensgate service apartments and why you attribute the questions. You asked several questions by council on Queensgate. I want you to make a clarification. But let's go to the other question, Mr. Mutuse. In charge number one, you have referred to the obligation Senator Mungatana. Sante bwana speaker. Mimi nilikuwa nataka kumuliza Mheshimiwa Mutuse mbunge wa Kibwezi Mashariki atufafanulie wakati ambapo Mheshimiwa Makamu wa Rais alipokuwa anazunguka na kusema anapigania haki za murima yeye kama mbunge wa Kibwezi Mashariki na kama mbunge wa kutoka sehemu ya Jimbo Gatuzi la Makueni je alijisikia ama alijihisi kwamba anabaguliwa ama anawekwa kando katika nchi hii ya Kenya tueleze vizuri tuelewe asante fafanua senator enokombo uh, thank you mr speaker mr speaker i will have two clarifications to seek from uh, Mr. Mutuse but because my my leader Senator Governor James Orengo opened this session with a verse from the Bible. I will also read one from the Bible. The book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. That is the Bible. The Mutus I want to know from Mr. Mutuse one is this impeachment motion really and truly your motion? I ask that question, Mr. Speaker, because on all accounts, the witness is unable to prove anything. Is this your motion, or are you called to just sign a motion than to come and defend it here? Secondly, in the oath of office for the deputy president, it is required of him to diligently serve the people of the Republic of Kenya in the office of the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. The people that reside in the mountain, the Mount Kenya region, are Kenyans. What is so wrong with a deputy president, a state officer, in defending people from a region in this country and then coming to defend other people in Nairobi and other people in other regions. What is so wrong? What is impeachable about that defense? I thank the speaker. Senator Veronica. Honorable Mutuse, just to clarify a few issues. 
One, are there any charges for money laundering that have been uh, preferred against the deputy president? That's one. And then to confirm whether um, the asset recovery agency, the case of the asset recovery agency that was before uh, Justice Esther Minor was fully resolved using the consent order. Those two clarifications. Senator Olekina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, w I need to seek two clarifications, and one of them is from the counsel of the Deputy President. This is in regards to the, alleg the allegation on ground four in terms of <clears throat> the consent that was reached upon for the 200 million. I heard that there was a consent after the deputy president filed an appeal of the case which I believe the judgment still stand. Do we have that consent? And in what circumstances led to that consent being um, agreed upon and the money returned, the 200 million shillings returned to the Deputy President, yet the High Court had already determined that that money were proceeds of corruption. Was it threats? Number two, I'd like to seek some clarification on the concept of shareholding. Is a coalition agreement a company? Is Kenya government a company? Because I was still not very clear about those two issues. Because we've been invited to interpret the coalition agreement of Kenya Kwanzaa. Yet, every time, based on the evidence presented, all I could hear is the deputy president talking about people. So are people now part of the coalition agreement? And is the coalition agreement a company or is it a coalition agreement registered with the registrar of political parties? Senator Meth. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. I also want to uh, get to understand from a clarification from Honorable Mutuse on uh, the assertion that you made on ground number. Um, well, on this accusation that we say that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa acquired a dairy farm in Nyandarwa County, whether there is any evidence in record that he has a dairy farm in Nyandarwa, either the title number of the, of the land or even the, you know, a, a photograph. I've seen you uh, put photograph of uh, hotels, either a photograph of cows or whatever you'd have in record. Number two, I would also want to know from the Honorable Mwengi Mutuse, on this matter that you say the people of Kenya feel that uh, they have been left out, whether there is any evidence in record of people who have complained to the National Cohesion and Integration Commission complaining against the conduct of the Deputy President in as far as uh, the issues that you've raised. Finally, there is uh, one um, uh, property of the estate of Didito Kashagwa that uh, is referred to as Kuruitu, and I think you have adduced uh, the list of uh, the, the directors. In your submissions, you said that the only one person who is an executor and is a, a, a beneficiary would be Deputy President Rigathi Kashagwa. In that will, did you see that part of the, uh, the people who are beneficiaries are the executors? So uh, one of the three, or all the three executors are also beneficiaries. And in the regards to what you have adduced in the Kruitu, uh, uh, property, it is actually one of the uh, one of the executors, not the deputy president, who actually bought that particular property. Senator Crystal Asiga. Thank you so much, Speaker. I'm very, very glad that um, the Bible has been cited because I have a couple of verses of my own I would like to also start my contribution with. I take it to Proverbs 17, which I just read yesterday, in fact, Speaker, which say in 14 and 15, 14 says, starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. 15, 
Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. And I'd like to maybe insert, instead of the Lord, I would like to insert the Senate, detest them both, and we have a very upward hill task. My question goes to the witness. In his motion, um, he has used the Oxford Advanced Dictionary to define gross misconduct. I was just curious to find out why the Oxford Dictionary and not maybe uh, a relevant Kenyan law that defines if he has one, or perhaps Black's Law Dictionary, which I know um, all legal counsels also um, rely upon. Thank you. Senator Gataya, more fire. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, speaker, I, I want to seek clarification from the council for uh, the deputy president. I have seen uh, my brain the photos and the uh, utterances for his ex the present. I need to get the, the relationship between what is before us and the present for this matter. So could, can you please explain what is the relationship between what he has provided for the president and what is before us as a house? Senator Karungo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My questions directed to Moshimiwa Mutuse. Welcome to the Senate, the Upper House. And my question is, you said the Deputy President is tribal because he spoke Kikuyu in Nairobi. Are you aware of Article 7 of the Constitution that says the state should promote local languages? Are you also aware of Article 27 that says no one should be discriminated on the language they speak? Are you also aware of Article 44 of the Constitution that says that every person has the right to use the language of their choice? But again, would you make the same complaint if we spoke in sign language? Uh, the next question is, the Deputy President has been talking about shares in government, Serikali, which we have been shown that the shareholding and the shares were uh, uh, signed by the government officials who are in government. He never talked about the nation, which is Taifa, shareholding of the country. So I would want you to tell me whether you know the difference between the two. And lastly, um, you have given us a lot of documents, even bank statements, and even payment vouchers. I know you as honorable member of parliament, not necessarily a government agency. How did you access these documents? Yet you know the Supreme Court of Kenya has indicated it is wrong to steal evidence or to unlawfully obtain evidence. We would want you to, to, to give us uh, that um, indication. And also, you said the Deputy President was in a company of senators in Nairobi County. I was actually one of them. Kindly, Refer to Article 96 of the Constitution. Senator Moses Kajuang. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my clarification is on um, paragraph 47 on the charge sheet. The National Assembly alleges that the Deputy President has several proxy companies, and one of them is Agrobrick Investment Limited. In paragraph 48, the National Assembly alleges that Bavika Nathalal Hirani is a proxy of His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa. Could the National Assembly provide some evidence because ground seven is framed as serious reasons to believe that the Deputy President has committed a crime? Could there be some evidence to convince the House that there could be reasons to believe so? Finally, on paragraph 74, the National Assembly alleges that the Deputy President has openly sabotaged the state's efforts in agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I'm a member of the Agriculture Committee, and I would be interested to get the evidence that there's been connivance, there's been cartelism, and there's been an association between the Deputy President with the cartels that have frustrated the development of the tea sector because the tea sector goes beyond the mountain, it goes all the way to Kisi and areas that neighbor Homer Bay County. 
And finally, which is this cooperative society whose name has been withheld? Could that information be provided to the Senate? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Robert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my clarification is to uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, um, on the issue of um, the property of the deceased. Uh, my question is, does the deceased have any children? Are they of sound mind? And uh, because it, it appears as though they are not involved in any of the management of the estate of the deceased, and that is the big question, and possibly a clarity that we would like to have from you. Thank you. Senator Okonga. Uh, 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 thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I want to seek clarification on what is at uh, page 15, uh, page 15, paragraph 41. <coughs> there is uh, the allegation being made that in the past two years, his Excellency the President has amazed Ayumonga's property portfolio, estimated at 5.2 billion. I was trying to follow your answers during cross examination, and I don't know whether you were trying to drop this allegation or if you want to still maintain it. I want you to give a proper clarification that links. The person against whom you brought the motion, that is the deputy president, with that allegation of 5.2 billion. I didn't, I didn't quite see you make a clear clarification in support of that allegation. If you could kindly clarify for me. Thank you. Senator Murango. Asante sana, Mustaiki Speaker. Nigetaka kumuliza mweshmiwa mutuse. Kwa sababu kampuni nyingi ambazo ameolodhesha pale kama ushahidi kwamba ni za watoto wake e, naibu wa rais nikadhi kachagua wewe mea, kwa sababu umesema umefanya kazi kama wakili lazima wewe ulikuwa ulikuwa unafanya kazi kupitia kampuni ilikuwa ni kwa ajili ya ulagai ukiwa na bambako kasi kwama wale watoto ambao umeodhoresha pale wote walitengeneza kampuni, kampuni ili kulagai pesa kupitisha, kupitisha zile kampuni. Swali langu la pili ni kwamba katika stakambadha ambazo zimeletwa zime pale zinaonyesha kwamba waliokuwa wanafaa kupata mgawa wa shares katika kampuni. Kuna wale walikuwa wanafaa kupata asilimia 30. Na ile miradi ilikuwa inaenda ilikuwa inafaa kwenda Western Kenya. Haikuwa imeorodheshwa kunja na Rombia mali pale pengine popote. Unasikia kwamba ulikuwa umegatuliwa kwa sababu umeto, umetoka makueni na ile milandi ya ikuwa inakuja makueni. Asante sana, Mr. Higgs Speaker. Senator Sifuna. Honorable Speaker, unfortunately, I hear that uh, the Bible verses have been exhausted. But uh, I, see, I seek a clarification from my friend, uh, Council Masharia, who has helped me to understand complex legal issues before. Uh, Council, what, uh, because you have presented a coalition agreement to explain this issue of shareholding, where does that coalition agreement leave members of political parties that are not signatories to the Kenya Kwanza agreements? That is the first question I would want uh, clarification to. Number two, what would be the place of a coalition agreement that is manifestly unconstitutional or illegal. And the, the, the page that you referred us to uh, includes securing positions that are supposed to be uh, competitively filled. For instance, the, the, the position of uh, permanent secretaries. Is it your position that in fact these advertisements that we see in the newspapers are just a charade to cover up uh, things that have already been concluded in coalition agreements such as the Kenya Kwanza agreement that you have exhibited here. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Senator Mundege. Asante, Para Speaker. Swalidangu ni kwa Mwesimu wa Mutuse. Wakati Deputy President Kurasemekana aliongea umbaya wa Janji Maina, 
ndio tuweze kuangalia kuna njia yeyote kwa sababu kila mtu wako na uhuru ya kwenda kotini ama kuita wazee ama kutumana e, kuna kitu njanji maina alifanya ndio tuweze kuelewa juu ya vile deputy president aliongea umbaya wa njanji wa huyu njanji asante bwana speaker tena tafokilifu Asante mtaiki speaker. Mtaiki speaker niko na swala kwa kutaka kufafanuliwa na wakili wa naibu rais. Uh, katika kosa la kwanza lile ambalo lilikuwa limeandikwa a gross violation iko uh, katika kipengele cha 15 katika hii particulars of allegations kinasema kwamba mimi mnajua msimamo wangu ya kwamba watoto wakiwa wengi kuna wale kwanza wa kuangaliwa si mnajua alafu anaendelea kuongea kwamba chakula iko jikoni karibu kuiva watoto ni wengi chakula ni kidogo iko na watoto ya nyumbani na iko na watoto wa jirani iko namna hiyo nataka afafanue uh, Kiswahili hichi kinamaanisha nini kutoka kwa huyo uh, uh, client wake Asante bwana speaker. Now honorable senator has allowed the parties to respond to those clarifications starting with the team from the national assembly and then we move to the team of the deputy president. Proceed. Thank you Mr speaker. If I may the honorable senator Ososi had no question directed to me. Senator Nyutu what led me to audit the wealth of the deputy president I, i'm just doing my work as a member of parliament under article 94 and 95 of the constitution part of my work is to oversight state officers the deputy president is one such state officer i set myself to draft and present an impeachment motion and I needed to support that impeachment motion with information, nothing else. Why didn't I also audit the president? I was not intending to bring an impeachment motion against the president. If in future another member wants to bring an impeachment motion against the president, I believe they will be at liberty to also do their work in the manner they deem. Who did this particular motion? You are truly speaking before you. Mwangi Mutusa, the member of parliament for Kibwezi West, did the particular motion. You have listed several companies. Yes, indeed, we have listed several companies. And just to clarify, there are those that companies that I was led by advocates for His Excellency Rikadi Gashagwa, and I said we have no problem with them. But also, there are companies that we have issues with and we have stated the companies that we have issues with and you would know because we have handled impeachment motions in the past that uh, just because we do not have an issue with one particular company does not mean that uh, those that we have been proved also fall with it but also importantly why we listed these companies is also to demonstrate character character in the sense that uh, if you have one company that is a construction company, then why do you have three others that are dormant? Why don't you use just that one that is a construction company to do your construction work? So it was also to demonstrate a web, an intricate web of activity to hide and conceal. And that's why we listed those companies. The 
affidavit of Jomo, he did not complete because uh, it was time bad, so I do not know what to respond because he just began mentioning about the affidavit of Jomo. Senator Professor Ojambo, uh, oh no, uh, Senator Fokisumu, shareholding of the 22 companies. Yes, we have appended the CR2 for the 22 companies to show that His Excellency the Deputy President has been owning what we are calling special purpose vehicles in the name of companies either by himself or by his children or other proxies as part of a character of a web which is also consistent with, minor, with, with, the, with the Esther Minor decision and you can see those companies listed in the Esther Minor decision that are not consistent with the normal way of doing business. Because in the normal way of doing business, you would imagine if, for example, Safaricom, that is a telecommunication company, also under it had another 20 other telecommunication companies. For what purpose? You would ordinarily a business person would concentrate on one company, it succeeds. Then if you have a different investment that is completely different from what you are doing is when you open a different company. But all these companies, you look at their objects, you look at everything, they are all made to do the same thing. The question is why? And remember, the offense here is reasons to believe that uh, the deputy president is committing, has committed crimes. And we believe this is a good basis to show that these companies are not formed for a legitimate purpose. Senator, in terms of Vipingo and Olive Gardens, Vipingo Ridge, we have been able to demonstrate that uh, Rigathi's, His Excellency Rigathi Kashagwa's children are part of the directors, two of them. In terms of Olive Gardens, we have been able to demonstrate through the affidavit of Mr. Jomo that Mr. Jomo indeed was acting for the Deputy President in the purchase. And as much as we refer to a future promise of refund, all of us would know that uh, offenses of corruption and money laundering are not straightforward offenses. And as much as we want to rely on technicality, and it is this technicality that has made it impossible to fight corruption in this country. If we look at it and all of us know how these things have been done, you would definitely see that uh, Mr. Jomo is saying in black and white that uh, he was a conduit for that purchase. We go to the Honorable Senator Mungatana, Senator for Tana River, Haki Zamulima, Kamane Lijisi Kubaguliwa. Nanafkiri ni kweli kwamba watu ambao nawakilisha na mimi mwenyewe pia na wakenya wengi wanajihisi kwamba kama naibu wa rais ambaye anahitajika kuongea kuhusu maswala ya Kenya mzima atazingatia tu maswala ya sehemu fulani basi wale wa Kenya wengine wote nikiwa ndani tunajihisi kubaguliwa na sio tu hata wale ambao wametoka sehemu tofauti na, na mlima hata wale wa mlima pia wao you setting them against the rest of Kenyans Senator Enoch, Exodus 23. Thank you. I will keep it to myself. But I am not participating in any <coughs> conspiracy against anyone. I am just doing my civic duty as a citizen of the Republic of Kenya and exercising my mandate as a member of the National Assembly, which is a constitutional mandate. I believe Senators here also have done in the past and even now and in the future, they will also bring issues in line with their mandate, in line with their responsibilities as citizens of the Republic of Kenya. Is this motion your own motion? Yes, it is my own motion. And in saying so, you say, I approved nothing. And that is not factual. Just to say the least, if you go through the motion 11 grounds and you look at each grounds, grounds most of the grounds have have, have, have subgrounds. 
And you will see we have given clear evidence in many, many of them. Incidences where we have been, we have been able to admit, like for example on the tea issue and on the circle, Madeira circle, that uh, by the time of presenting the motion I had not gathered evidence and the rules do not permit that I present new evidence. I have considered, I have considered, but only on those two. That does not mean that I have not proved anything. I have actually proved most of the grounds. So I would be urging my Senator for Kitui to also be fair to my case and find that even if only one ground is proved to also vote for the approval. Because one of the videos that are presented before this house is a speech by the Deputy President at AIC Kitui. Two more minutes. Believe, two more minutes. Which I believe the Senator represents. And in that video, you will see the Deputy President telling the people of Kitui, kwamba nyinyi wakamba, amuna shias. Hata napigana na uyu raisi sana, kwa nini anawapatia viti katika serikali. Those are the people that Senator Enoch represents, who the Deputy President told them they do not have a right to be in cabinet. In terms of uh, the oath of office, and it was done right in Kitui town. In terms of oath of office, diligently serve the people of Kenya. Yes, and that is where the problem is. You saw to serve the people of Kenya, not the people of our region. That's where the problem is. Senator Veronica, charges of money laundering. I am not aware of any ongoing proceedings in respect of the DP in terms of money laundering, but I'm aware of the, that the Justice minor decision has not been allowed on merit and therefore still remains good law. Senator Ledana Olekina, that was to the DP's lawyers. Senator Methu, my good friend, Nyandarua County Dairy. I consider I have not presented evidence on Nyandarua County Dairy because, of course, of the limited timelines in terms of work, working on this. NCRC complaining about uh, the question was whether there, is, there has been any complaint to NCIC about the Deputy President's remarks, I wouldn't know because I don't work for NCIC. I wouldn't know, just to be fair. Kuruwitu and CR12, Kuruwitu was bought at 250 million, money that has not been disclosed is source. And the owners of Kuruwitu uh, is Vipingo Ridge, and we have also demonstrated who are the owners of Vipingo Ridge. You know money laundering, you hide, you hide, it is a web. It is, that's why it has become it has become very difficult sometimes even to investigate money laundering, and there is no dispute that uh, the two the two sons of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa are directors of that company. That has not been disputed. Senator Asigi, why we are using the Oxford Dictionary and not Black's Law Dictionary, law has now also delved to the place of uh, the common citizens also to understand what it is and not the jargon of the past. And so Oxford Dictionary also offers plain English definitions and we thought it is also good to use plain English definition because not all of us are lawyers. I do not think that it is disputed that the definition we have given is wrong in terms of what constitutes gross misconduct. Senator Karung, Karungo, my very good friend also, tribal speaking in tribal language in Kikuyu and whether that is not permitted under Article 7, Article 27, Article 44, clearly the Deputy President is a state officer and has taken oath to promote national unity. Nairobi is our capital city, all communities are here. It cannot be said that Nairobi belongs to the Akamba, much as we border here, or the Luya, or the Kikuyu, when you speak in Nairobi, you must be sensitive. It is just like speaking in Senate, in mother tongue. Shares and company, clearly my answer and response is, we are not, the Deputy President has talked about Kenya is a company for shareholders. He did not say that Kenya is led by Kenya Kwanza coalition, a political coalition of shareholders. So let us not twist facts. 
This is an afterthought. There has never been anywhere where the deputy president said, Naongea kusu Kenya Kwanza coalition. He has been consistent. Kenya is a company and it will benefit its shareholders. So the coalition agreements that have been adduced before you are an afterthought, are just a diversion in my view. Uh, access documents, how did I access these documents including accounts? I got the services of whistleblowers when people knew that I wanted to do this. I got the services, I got a lot of information from whistleblowers whom I do not intend to disclose their identity because they are protected under the Witness Protection Act. Honorable Kajuang, I will be, will be, will be, my counsel will be talking about the issue of Abrobika and how it is part particular director is related, is connected, is linked to the nexus between that particular director and His Excellency the Deep, Deep Gashagwa. In terms of agriculture, I did admit I did not present evidence in terms of uh, is sabotaging of the tea, much as I have information, but I leave it at that, that we have not presented adequate evidence in terms of sabotaging. But Kenyans would know that uh, that role is domiciled in his office and the price for tea has not become any better. In fact, it is still oscillating up and down. The cooperative society are also considered, we have not presented evidence. Senator Ogwaka, the question was to the DP's legal team. Senator Omogeni, page 15, paragraph 41. Whether I can tabulate, and during our closing remarks, we'll be you able don't to... Have a we will we'll be, we'll be at our conclusion remarks, we'll be able to answer this question, but just for your information, the land acquired through Amunyoro Investments is 1.5 billion. The Abadeas, when we added, came to about a billion shillings. When you add Kuruitu, 250 million, and others that will be showing, 412 million for Olive Gardens, they will all come to the figure that we are talking, or 